Welcome back, slide rule fans. Uh, today we're going to discuss my little collection of Soviet slide rules and Soviet slide rules in general. Um, let's, well, here's the collection, but let's get them out of here and uh, discuss them individually. Okay, uh, so when you're looking at Soviet slide rules, you're going to see uh, probably this ghost and 5161. Uh, this is this means like standard, like ANSI or something like that um, for the Russian slide rules, and they're all this 5161, which is their uh, linear slide roll standard. Uh, you'll see that dash some number, which is the revision year of the of the standard. Uh, there are even revision years, I think, greater than 72, but I'm not sure. There are definitely slide rolls made after 72, which makes some of these slide rolls uh, some of the newest slide rolls you can buy. Um, Okay, uh, so let's let's look at some examples. Uh, this example uh, is an LSLO 250-11 model. Okay, uh, you can see that uh, here. Um, so 250-11. So the first part, the LSLO means it's a closed body rule. Uh, some of the rules say D for duplex. I don't have any duplex rules. Uh, the next number, the 250, is the uh, scale length, so 250 millimeters, which is standard uh, slide roll scale length, um, and 11 for the number of scales. Uh, so you'll see in LSLO 250-11, um, made by a bunch of different factories. So this is a very common slide roll. Uh, if you have a case, uh, this case has the, uh, the factory mark on it. Um, sometimes you'll also see the price price mark down there. Um, okay, but you'll see the same design made by a bunch of different factories. Um, almost exactly the same, but there are slight variations. This particular slide rule over the years is made with a lot of variations. Uh, you'll see some variations with uh, uh, railroad track divisions instead of these standard divisions. Um, you'll see some very early ones where this scale on the bottom is an L scale, which makes it an actual Reitz design slide roll. Uh, so this slide roll is not really a Reitz design. It doesn't have any scale names here, but this is a K scale, uh, an A scale, a B scale, a CI scale, a C scale, and a D scale. So far that's all very standard. This though is an LL3 scale, so this is a log-log slide roll. Um, there's an LL2 scale on the side edge here, uh, so that's LL2 going from about 1.1 up through E, then continuing here on LL3. Um, this is just a ruler on this edge. Uh, some versions of this slide roll have a plastic um, plastic cursor, but this is a glass metal cursor. Um, okay, and then on the rear here you see some tables, um, and there are the standard Reitz trigonometric scales, S, S, T, and T. Um, again, sometimes you'll see these with decimal degree divisions and sometimes with uh, degrees, minutes, seconds. Um, okay, you can see the 1977 year of production of this slide roll. So 72 is the year of revision of the standard. 77 is the actual production re uh, year, making this one of my newest slide rolls, actually. Um, okay, uh, it's an interesting scale set. There's no L, so it's sort of, a, sort of an electro scale set, I would say, with LL2 and LL3. Um, but this is a very easy one to find online. Um, this, the slide can be reversed. Uh, this one's coming. I need to glue that uh, plastic back down. Um, they're not very high quality. The wood um, is not very dense and, uh, you know, typical kind of cheap, low quality wood slide roll production. I believe the scales are engaged, or, sorry, engraved. Um, but you know, not particularly high, high quality, um, but these are very, very easy to find, so uh, if you look long enough, you'll find one in, in relatively good condition. Um, okay, so so this is a very common, very easy to find slide roll, um, if you are looking to add something uh, Soviet to your collection, <laughs> okay. Um, let's look at the, I have two slide rolls here, uh, which are plastic. Uh, let's look first at this one, the LSLO 250-10P. Um, these plastic ones, I think, are all made in this factory. That mark, I think, designates the factory. Um, let's first look at this smaller one. This is a Reed-style slide roll. Uh, 
Um, so we have a standard read style, uh, style slide rule, so we do have that L scale there, otherwise the scales on the front are the same as the previous rule. Uh, then there's a ruler here, then on the back are the standard reads, um, reads trigonometric scales. Um, you have the dual windows on the back, uh, you have these marks for reading instead of a hairline, um, which is typical of, of other companies. Uh, what you might suspect is that this slide roll looks like a late model Faber-Castell plastic read slide roll. In fact, these cases uh, look like late model Faber-Castell plastic cases. And uh, the reason for that, as far as I can tell, uh, there's one source online that says the reason for that is um, that Faber-Castell sold them uh, some slide roll production machines and they used that to produce these two slide rolls. Um, that would explain why this looks almost exactly like a Faber-Castell slide roll. There's some difference in the, the coloring, uh, the scales, you know, are, are redesigned, but this is essentially identical to a late model Faber-Castell slide roll. And it, it has all the high quality touches, like a uh, two color printing here, uh, which not a lot of read slide, uh, not a lot of slide rolls have uh, on the low end. Um, it has a nice cursor. It has a nice feel. The plastic is nice. It doesn't. I've never seen any with the Faber-Castell problem of the bleeding uh, scales, so they probably use a different plastic and/or ink compound. Um, but this is a really nice uh, late model read style slide roll. If you're looking for something cheap, these can be found um, shipped to you less than twenty dollars. Um, new, even new or almost new. Uh, you see this one is from 1977, but this slide roll is produced into the 80s, believe it or not. Uh, so you can find some very new examples. Um, so, uh, this is a really cool slide roll with kind of an interesting provenance. Um, okay, let's have a look at the other plastic one. Uh, so I guess these are from the same factory. Uh, there's essentially the two different plastic designs, I think only the two. Um, This one is uh, what I want to call a pseudo Darmstadt design. It's not quite a Darmstadt slide roll, and you'll see on the front the difference between this and a Darmstadt slide roll um, is really that there's no P scale. Instead of a P scale, you get a ST scale. I actually prefer this design to the standard Darmstadt design. My criticism of the standard Darmstadt slide roll is that there should be an ST scale. Um, so this. Uh, this design changes that. It, it swaps out the P scale for an ST, and like a lot of late model Darmstadts, it includes a BI. Um, then, like a Darmstadt slide roll, it has your three uh, log log scales on the back. It has This actually has rear hairlines, um, unlike the other slide roll, um, for reading those LL3 scales, or you can reverse the slide. Uh, so this is an interesting design. Also, again, high quality, uh, dual color printing. Um, essentially a Faber-Castell Darmstadt uh, frame, or large closed body frame, um, produced in the Soviet Union. Um, the cases, uh, I mean, they're very thin. Uh, the other one, I think, has a dent. Uh, the cases are nothing to write home about, but um, uh, very thin plastic cases. Okay, uh, the last slide roll I have actually a couple of other videos on. Uh, this is the KL-1 uh, circular slide roll. Uh, there's two different factories that make this, um, as far as I know, and the, the, here's the factory mark on this one. Um, in my experience, the ones from this factory um, are less yellowed. Whatever paper or, or whatnot they use for this scale uh, is less yellowed than you get from the other factory. Uh, you can also see some variants have two screws here, or, and some have three. Um, but the scale layout is the same on all of them. Uh, so here you have a single decade logarithmic scale inside and the two decade here for doing squares and square roots. Uh, you have your trigonometric scales on the back. There's a logarithmic scale on the outside. So the back face doesn't spin, only the needle spins. The needle's connected to the needle on the front face and the entire front face can spin. Um, this is a cool slide roll. If, if, if I was to redesign this, I would somehow try to sneak in an L scale. Uh, but past that, I think this is a really cool... A unique little slide roll. Um, the ones made in the other factory sometimes come in a little uh, nice plastic circular case, uh, but these uh, seem to always come in this little box. Um, 
Okay, but uh, the KL1, very popular with collectors, and I have a series of two videos on how to use it, um, if you're interested in the KL1. Um, okay, a couple of other comments here. Um, besides these rules that you've seen, uh, there are a few pocket slide rule designs um, out there, and there are some duplex rules, which are marked LSLD. The duplex rules, um, they don't really entice me. That The cursors on them seem to deteriorate, and when you're looking, you'll often see ones with very bad-looking cursors or missing cursor. Um, so I haven't uh, tried to get any of those. Um, but some tips if you're trying to buy these online is uh, you could try searching logarithmic ruler, which is the translation of the Russian name, um, so if you go on eBay and search logarithmic ruler, you might get some hits that you won't get otherwise. And uh, besides the KL1, um, you can get all these other slide rolls less than $20 if, uh, if uh, you, you try even ship to you less than $20. Um, so, uh, good luck uh, adding some Soviet slide rolls to your collection.